Welcome to the MicroStrategy App Developer Academy course on Working with Prompts. You can use prompts to enable your app to filter data in response to user input. I will demonstrate the prompt user interface on the iPad and iPhone. Then I'll explain how to pass prompt answers between documents using links. I'll compare prompts to selectors and go over some performance considerations. I've opened a prompted document in MicroStrategy Mobile. I'll respond to the prompts so that the document displays data starting from March of 2010, then select all call centers except web. For the last prompt option, I only want to see data for call centers with at least $90,000 in revenue. Tap Apply, and the data is filtered to reflect our prompt answers. The user can reprompt using the filter button. I'll adjust my response so we can see data for more call centers. Now I'll demonstrate the same workflow, this time on the iPhone. I'll open this document. I'm picking March 2010 again. Select every call center except for web. And I'll only view call centers that made at least $90,000 in revenue. This document uses the interactive grid. iPhone users can reprompt by tapping the action button, then selecting filter. In this demonstration, I have used the date, shopping cart, and slider prompt styles. Here are some more of the prompt styles available. Two especially interesting prompt styles are geolocation prompts and barcode prompts. The geolocation prompt enables the app to narrow down an attribute element list based on the user's location. The barcode prompt enables the user to enter a barcode using the camera on his or her mobile device. You have seen the prompts interface and some types of prompts you can provide for, re for users. The real power of prompts is that you can use them to create dynamic links between documents. I'll switch back to the iPad app so you can see what I mean. I'll respond to the prompts. There's a link to employee performance document at the bottom of the screen. The employee performance document uses the same prompted data set as the current document. We have seen some choices for how we're going to configure the link. I've configured the link so that when the user taps to run the employee performance document, she has to answer the same prompts a second time. This is pretty annoying. The point of the link is to enable the user to drill down to the employee level from the call center level so it doesn't make sense to have to specify the call centers twice. The app would be much more user friendly if the user only had to answer the prompt once and her selections would carry over to other documents within the same app. This is called passing prompt answers. I'll demonstrate how to pass prompt answers when you link between documents in an app. Right-click the link and select Edit Links. When you link to a document, a list of prompts display in the box. For each prompt, you can choose one of the following options for prompt passing behavior. As you can see, I've chosen Prompt User, which means that the user has to answer any prompts over again. If I instead select Answer with the same prompt from the source, then MicroStrategy will automatically respond to the prompt with the same answers the user gave for the source document. In order to use this option, the prompt in the target document must be identical to the prompt in the source document. That means that both documents use the same standalone prompts or that both documents use the same data set. Now you can see how passing prompt answers can make your links more dynamic and provide a smoother experience for your users. Here I'll respond to prompts for the call center document. When I tap the link, the employee performance document displays data right away without a prompt screen. Of course, the user can always tap filter to reprompt and see different data. We've covered prompt user and answer with the same prompt from the source. Now I'll discuss other options for passing prompt answers. 
You can use answer with an empty answer to enable the user to skip providing an answer for the prompt in the target document. This means that the corresponding filter will not be applied. You can only answer a prompt with an empty answer when the prompt does not require an answer. When you define a prompt, you can choose whether you would like to require an answer. In the General tab, select Prompt Answer is Required. To use Answer Dynamically, add a link to a column header in a grid, graph, or widget and choose the Answer Dynamically option. The link will pass prompt answers corresponding to the attribute element the user taps. The Use Default Answer option enables you to automatically respond to the prompts with the default answer. Here's how you can create a default prompt answer in MicroStrategy Web. Create the prompted report you want to use as a data set. Instead of just saving the report in design mode, click Run the Report, Respond to the Prompts, and click Run Report at the bottom of the screen. After you save the data set, the prompt answers you selected will become the default prompt answers. You can control this behavior by expanding advanced options in the Save As window. As you can see, the default is Save Report as Prompted and set the current prompt answers to be the default prompt answers. Click OK to save your prompted report. You can also specify default prompt answers at the document level. Run the document in MicroStrategy Web. Respond to the prompts, switch to the design menu, from the home menu select save as and keep the option display prompt and use the current answers as the default answers. Passing prompt answers is great when you want to present a prompt right when the user starts working with your app and then you let the user navigate your app without having to fill out more prompts. Notice that prompt answers persist. For example, when I return to the first document I viewed, the data displayed still reflects the, re the prompt responses. To further streamline the user experience, you can keep the user from knowing that you are even using prompts after the first screen. As you can see, I've hidden the filter button on this screen. Here's how you can hide the filter button. With the document open in MicroStrategy Web, Go to the Tools menu and select Document Properties. Click Mobile, then clear the Display Filter Interface checkbox. You've learned how to incorporate prompts into your apps and pass prompt answers between documents. When you build your app, it is important to consider when you should use prompts. Sometimes selectors are a good alternative. I'll take a moment to compare selectors and prompts in MicroStrategy Mobile. Selectors, like prompts, enable you to provide the user with controls to determine which information to display on a document. Here's a document that demonstrates how you can use selectors within an app. The user can choose call centers, pick a specific month, and use a slider to qualify on a metric. And just as you can pass prompt answers, you can also pass selector values between documents using links. One difference between prompts and selectors is that users must interact with prompts before viewing any results, but selectors display simultaneously with the rest of the document. The prompt interface might be preferable in certain cases, such as when you need the user to choose from a large number of attribute elements. Here's the most important difference between prompts and selectors. Prompts are always applied as filters, but you have the option to slice data when you use selectors. When a user responds to a prompt, the answers determine the WHERE clause of the SQL. Every time a user responds to a set of prompts, the app sends a new query. 
This is why your app will not be fully functional in offline mode if you use prompts. With selectors, on the other hand, you have the option to slice the data instead of filtering. This means that the app pulls in data for all possible selector values, then uses subsets of the data as needed. This enables the app to work in an offline mode and can improve the responsiveness of your app. While I'm on the topic of performance, let's take a look at what happens when a mobile user responds to a prompt. The mobile device communicates with the mobile server and intelligence server. The intelligence server queries the database based on the user's input, then performs further calculations and sends the data back to the mobile device. You can use a data set based on an intelligent cube so that queries will run against the intelligent cube in intelligence server memory instead of hitting the data warehouse. In order to take advantage of an intelligent cube to improve prompt performance, note that the intelligent cube must include data for all possible prompt answers. And that's a wrap for this model course entitled, Working with Prompts.